Good evening. This is Mary Bostrom with Ken Bostrom Ministries. My husband Ken and I have the ministry of We Are United in Purpose. That's the what God gave us in the very beginning of our ministry. And our mandate is to reach a lost, teach a found, and preach the word. I'm here today to teach prophetically about the aligning of, of God's prophetic timing. Sometimes we get out of alignment because we look at things that are in the natural and we forget that we have to align with God's prophetic timing, not our timing, not natural timing, not timing that you see on the news, not, not, not timing that we uh, see on our natural, uh, natural mind and our natural lives. We have to look at a God's point of view. And that's what I'm here to do today is to uh, bring you into an alignment with God's prophetic timing uh, from 5778 uh, 2018. But first of all, we need to look at 5777, which is 5777 is a year on the Hebrew calendar, and that goes all the way back to uh, th th when Adam was created. And, you know, there's, there's uh, a little mix up there with the years. There's a lot of people that think it's one way or another way, but the, the Hebrew calendar has been following it, and it's 5777. Now, the Hebrew letters have got uh, all the, there are 22 letters. Each one of them represent a number. Each one of them has a pictograph, and each one of them have a meaning. And 5777, seven is a sword. It's, um, it's, um, Zion, and it, it's a sword, and it was the year of the clashing sword because we have 5777. Seven, seven. Now, you might agree with me, and you might not agree with me, but last year was definitely a year of a clashing sword. It, we had so many opportunities to fail. We had so many. It was a chaotic, it was a difficult year. It was very challenging. Here in the Houston area, we had Hurricane Harvey, very challenging. In, in the government, it was very challenging. And, uh, but last year, 2017, on uh, June, uh, June 6, so in 50 years ago, it was 6767 on our calendar. And that was when, during the Six Day War, when Israel got back Jerusalem for the first time since 70 AD. And um, so it was a 50th anniversary of the unification of Israel back to God's covenant people, his covenant land, his covenant city, to God's covenant people. And, uh, you know, when, when you want to align with prophetic timing, you need to align with, uh, with Israel, what God is doing with Israel, especially Jerusalem. I, I believe that Jerusalem started the prophetic time clock. I've got a... a, a hourglass here and you know it doesn't look like it's moving very fast but when when it gets down when the top gets down it goes very fast and that's what's happening now we're in God's we're aligning with God's prophetic timing um, J. Bart, uh, Barton Payne's Encyclopedia of Biblical Prophecy, 8,362 predictive verses containing 1,817 predictions on 737 manners. And, you know, the first thing we want to align with is the Bible. We need to align everything that we do with the Bible, especially with prophecies that have to do with Jesus, prophecies that have to do with aligning with his prophetic timing. Uh, God doesn't want us ignorant of his timing. He, he, there's three things in the New Testament God says not to be ignorant of. And we can remember it by saying we should not be ignorant of the IRS. And definitely in this April, we do not want to be ignorant of the IRS. But if, if you look at it in the New Testament, IRS, don't be ignorant about Israel, don't be ignorant about the rapture, and don't be ignorant about spiritual things. Those are three things the New Testament, the New Testament tells us uh, not to be ignorant of. And if you look at it, uh, there was all these, these prophecies that had to do with Jesus' first coming. They're, they were prophesied for 4,000 years, beginning in Genesis 1, talking about the seed of the woman. 
And so all those prophecies had to do with, with Jesus' first coming, and they were all fulfilled in 34 years. 4,000 years of prophecies fulfilled in 34 years. Do you know that his second coming has seven times more prophecies than his first comings? And when it's like the hourglass. It doesn't seem like it's going very fast. But all of a sudden, when they start coming together, it's going to be fast. And so God doesn't want us to be ignorant about that. And if you want to know about God's, where, where we are in God's time clock, watch Israel. And that's one of the things we're going to do. You know, in Second Chronicles, um, it talks about the sons of Issachar. Now, each tribe has spe specific uh, gifting, a specific purpose of the 12 tribes of Jacob. Um, and the, the Issachar had a, they were given the understanding of the heavenly patterns of, of the timing of the heavenlies so that they would know what Israel ought to do. They, they had to know the specific timing of, of all the leap years so that they would not be off on when, uh, when they were supposed to be going to Jerusalem. They were commanded to go to Jerusalem uh, uh, three times a year. And if they would be off, it would be like us going to a dentist appointment on the wrong day. Uh, you would not, you'd be, at the, you'd be out of timing. You'd be out of alignment. And so that's one of the things we have to, we have to look for with Israel. Now, number one, remember, number one, timing and aligning with God's prophetic timing, number one is the Bible. That is absolute, that is it. Now, the next thing is aligning with proven prophets with a track record. If the prophets don't have a good track record, I wouldn't listen to them. I usually listen with my spirit. My spirit man will, will tell me if, uh, if this person is off, if I'm supposed to listen to him or not. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like all of a sudden something shuts off inside of me and it blocks the word from coming. One of the things I, I, that really struck me was I heard about this prophecy from 1217. 1217, that's a long time ago. 1217, this was from a rabbi in Germany. He was a, a trusted rabbi. He was, he was a much beloved rabbi. And uh, several years ago, Ludwig Schneider, who was a, a German language scholar, discovered this prophecy dating back to 1217 um, by a scholar, uh, by, by uh, Rabbi uh, Judah ben Samuel. Now, 1217 is the year that he died. And so he prophesied this as one of his last prophetic words before, uh, before going to heaven. And uh, he prophesied about the last 10 jubilees. Now, a jubilee is 50 years on, on uh, the Hebraic calendar. Every 50 years, remember, your debts were canceled, uh, slaves were set free, uh, you got your land back, many things happen. And I always, I always think um, that's for us, but what, does God have a jubilee? And when you think about God's jubilee, God gets his stuff back. And uh, we'll, we'll look at that, but you know, uh, in, in the story of Noah, when God said, man will have 120 years, what if he was talking about jubilee years? What if he was talking about 120 jubilee years? That is 120, 50 years, which would be 6,000 years. So that could be that the timing is just about up. Uh, but this, this prophet, uh, this rabbi, his track record on this prophecy alone is so accurate, it's just astounding. First of all, he prophesied that uh, the Ottoman Turks would rule over the holy city of Jerusalem for eight jubilees. So eight times 50 is 400 years. The Ottoman Turks didn't even exist at that time. They, they were just, they were not existing. And so... Uh, that didn't happen in 1217. In 1517, the Ottoman Turks took over Jerusalem. And um, they ruled in Jerusalem for 400 years. 400 years. So that 
first part of the prophecy was absolutely accurate. Then he said, the, the ninth jubilee, he said that Jerusalem would be in no man's land. And that's when, uh, how the British took over uh, Jerusalem from the Ottoman Turks. It was amazing. It's a story of General Allenby, and it's it's amazing. He was a Christian. He he prayed how he was going to do it. God God showed him to uh, about leaflets coming out of a plane, and and he had put on on those leaflets, uh, get out of Je Jerusalem, uh, sign General Allenby. Well, when the Muslims read it, they read get out of Jerusalem, signed Allah. And, and Allenby and uh, the Allied forces were able to take over Jerusalem that had been held by the Ottoman Turks for 400 years. They were able to take it without a shot. That was amazing. And so they had it for the Ninth Jubilee. They had it from uh, 1917 to 1967. So in 1967, what happened was the Six-Day War. And uh, during that time from 1917 to 1967, uh, the Jordanians called Jerusalem a no man's land. It was actually labeled that by many people because Jerusalem belonged to no country at that time, just exactly as the rabbi had prophesied in 1217. Well, in 1967 was the Six Day War. Israel did not start that war. Uh, the Arab countries around it started that war. And uh, they got back Jerusalem for the first time since 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. Well, what next? What after 1967? Uh, from 1967 to 2017, which was last year, uh, the, the rabbi prophesied that the that Jerusalem would be in the hands of the Jews, and that's what happened. They were, it was under the hands of the Jews. Jews were able to go in, in all of Jerusalem for 50 years and said after that jubilee, which ended last year, that uh, it would begin the times of the Messiah. So beginning the times of the Messiah doesn't mean Jesus is just going to come right now. Because there is a set time for Jesus to come. Just like there was a set time for him to die on the cross. It was just a set time for him to be born. All those things were set times. And his comment, last coming is going to be the same thing. So we're, first of all, we align with the Bible. Second, align with, with the prophets that have a proven track record. Um, not everybody has a proven track record. Now, the next thing I like to align with is what God told us to align with uh, from Genesis 1.14. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years, Genesis 1.14. Uh, now, the third thing you watch for is signs in the heavens, and that's something that most people are ignorant of. Most people think, oh, the stars, that has to do with witchcraft. That's astrology. That has to do with horoscope. No, that has to do with God. Now, if you remember, the devil has never created anything. All he can do is pervert things and lie about things. But God is the creator of all good things. And so he, uh, if you look here, it says let. Let there be lights. See, the lights in the heavens are, it's ma'or, and that means a light holder. It holds the lights. It holds the lights. And so these are light holders. And God can turn them on, and he can turn them off anytime he wants. He doesn't turn them on just during an eclipse or something. I believe that there was a world that was. Second Peter also agrees with me. There was a world that was. And I think that the light, the illuminaries were there at that time. Because everything that when God said let... It's like he turned them back on. And so he, he's basically saying, turn the lights back on. Turn the light holders. And he started the sun uh, putting the light back in it again. Um, the next thing I want to look at is signs. Now, signs are signals 
warnings. It, the Hebrew word here is ot, and it's a warning, it's a banner. You can, you can say that God was the original billboard advertiser. And uh, the lexicon si uh, states, signs of the times, token of truth of prophecy, foretells of some minor event, the fulfillment of which serves as a sign or a proof for future fulfillment of the whole prophecy. Every sign gives us a message. When I was coming up to Houston today from, from South Houston, I was looking at the signs. I was looking at how close I was to, to this office, I was, uh, to this um, studio. I was looking at how far I had to go, where I had to turn. That's the way signs are. And God put signs in the heavens. Do you know, if, if, I, was gonna, if I was gonna leave today to visit either my daughter in Minnesota or my daughter in Florida, I would not see one sign when I left, but I would know my destination. And the closer I would get to my destination, the more signs there would be. First of all, there may be one telling the distance. And the closer I would get, the more signs I would see, the closer they are together, and, and they would be bigger. And that's exactly what's gonna happen with the signs in the heavens. You know, I, I knew back with the uh, blood moon tetrads in 2014, 2015, I had pastors calling me up, Mary, is Jesus coming in 2015 with the blood moon tetrads? And I would say, no. I would say no, because the Lord told me a long time ago when I first started studying the signs in the heavens, he told me to watch 2017. And there's something that triggered 2017, and I think it has to do with the fulfillment of the last 10 jubilees. That's my personal opinion. But he told me to watch. He didn't say that he was coming in 2017. He told me to watch. Now, he didn't tell me to speculate. He didn't tell me to, to tell everybody something that's going to happen and make me out to be a false prophet. He told me to watch. And isn't that what Jesus told us to do? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. What do we watch? We watch the nations. We watch the signs in the heavens. We watch Jerusalem and Israel. Those are some of the things that we watch. What was... What was one of the signs of Jesus' first coming? The people in Jerusalem were absolutely ignorant to it. The Magi came. The first question in the New Testament states, where is he that is born the king of the Jews? We saw his star and we came to worship him. The Magi from the east, from Babylon area, had been taught by Daniel. Daniel stayed there. See, that was just nothing but a nation of stargazers. And when, when, um, when Daniel stayed there, he corrected them because he knew what God had to say about the heavenlies. See, Adam named every one of the animals, but God named every star. He not only named them, he numbered them. And so they all have a purpose. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose on this earth. We have to remember that. And so the Magi were saying, where is he that is born? The, the star that they were following was a sign that there was born the king of the Jews. Who ever heard of a king being born? A, a king, you know, usually a prince is born to a king. But here a king was born. And if you look at it, it's on earth as it is in heaven. Throughout history, all the empires would watch something that was happening in the heavenly, something unusual. They would record it, and then they would watch to see what was happening on earth. They didn't know it was going to happen, but they knew that was a correlation with something very unusual in the heavenlies. That doesn't happen every day. And so on earth as it is in heaven, that, yes, we, we pray that things uh, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But it also has to do with the signs in the heavens. You see them in the heavens, something is going to happen on earth. It may not be what you think it's going to be, but just watch and pray. And if God wants you to know, he'll, he'll let you know. And the other word here is seasons. That, that word seasons, when we think of seasons, we think of spring, summer, uh, fall, and winter. And that's not what God has in mind. 
uh, the word for uh, seasons in Hebrew is the same word as feast. It's the same, it, it means, it's the word is moedim, and it means a fixed point in time on God's prophetic calendar. And so God has uh, fixed appointed times. There's, there's seven feasts, he calls them. Those are his fixed appointed times. And you know, they're going to be celebrated forever. Even the millennium, they're going to be celebrated. They're going to be celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. It, it mentions that in Zechariah chapter 14. He, he, that is going to be celebrated. And one of the things that we want to look at here is the signs in the heavens that happen on prophetic times. Now, this was a major thing. This was uh, the solar eclipse of August 21st, 2017. It, it went from the west to the east. When we think of the sun, we think of the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Well, this went backwards. It started in the west, it goes in the east. Uh, I like one of this, this picture here of the, um, the plane going uh, in front of this, uh, the sun as it was eclipsing. And um, it looks like the sword. Doesn't it, doesn't it look like a sword? I love that picture. It's probably my favorite picture of the solar eclipse. Uh, this was extremely unusual. It was a total solar eclipse from the west coast to the east coast. The word eclipse comes from an old French word that had a Greek origin, and it means abandonment or forsaking. Abandonment and forsaking, as if the sudden darkness expressed divine displeasure so severe that God chose his temporary remove the gift of his presence. Um, I was in Washington, D.C. during this eclipse. And, you know, it, it wasn't in totality in Washington, D.C., but we could feel it. We could feel all of a sudden it got cool. The, the wind kind of shifted and, and it got cool. It got a little bit dimmer. And when, if you put, put on your glasses, your, your specific eclipse glasses, you could see the eclipse happening, but you couldn't see it with your natural eye. And um, so there was, there was a lot of people who were just kind of ignoring it because they were not under their totality. But I have an app on my phone. It's called Skyview app. And after the eclipse was over, I thought, I should take a picture of it with my app. And this is the picture that I took. And I put the words out here. Uh, you see an alignment here. You see alignment of Mercury, the Moon, the Sun, the Regulus, and Mars. Now, unless you understand the king stars and king planets of the heavenlies, you might miss this. But the Magi did not miss this because this was extremely important for Jesus' first coming. Regulus is a king star. Jupiter is a king planet. Leo is a king's constellation. And here we have the alignment. And as I took that picture, I heard the Lord say, I heard fall in, close ranks. Now, anybody that's been in the military, when they hear fall in, they know exactly how to align in the military. And so here, the heavenly, uh, heavenly stars, the moving stars, the, the fixed stars, they were coming into an alignment. They were closing ranks. And I believe that God is calling for an alignment in the heavens. He's calling for the alignment on earth. He's calling for an alignment in the church. Everybody needs to get into their place in church. Uh, it's time to align with the light of God in the midst of darkness. There is so much darkness on this earth right now that, that uh, we need to come into an alignment and be that light that Jesus wants us to be. Now, was this, was this a sign of judgment? I'll tell you why I don't think it's a sign of judgment. Because it came through, the totality came over seven cities that their name was Salem. It came over Salem, Oregon, and Salem, Idaho, then Salem, Wyoming, then Salem, Nebraska, then Salem, Missouri, then Salem, Kentucky, then Salem, South Carolina. That word Salem there, it means peace, it means wholeness, it means complete, it means devoted to God. And so I don't see the eclipse as a judgment whatsoever of the United States. Uh, there are some other things I see, we'll get to that in a bit. But the timing that it was in 
was phenomenal because it began the 40 days of Teshuva, the, the 40 days of turning back to God. It's a 40 days that started this, the eclipse started on a little one and it went all the way to Yom Kippur. The eclipse didn't, but the 40 days went that, that long. Uh, it's the same 40 days that when Jonah came to prophesy that Nineveh would fall in 40 days if they didn't repent. It's uh, the, the 40 days that uh, Moses went up the mountain, Mount Sinai, for the second time to uh, pray for Israel because of the golden calf incident. He came down on Yom Kippur. The first Yom Kippur, the first day of atonement, say, God has forgiven you. And there was so much rejoicing that they would gave so much offering that uh, they had to tell him to stop. So I think it's a wonderful time. Uh, Jesus was led into the Spirit, into the by the Spirit, into the wilderness at this time, and so uh, this was a major time for the solar eclipse to happen. Not only that, but the the next month, the next month after that, uh, on September twenty third, we had a sign in the heaven that has. Uh, some of this has never happened before. It's prophesied in Revelation chapter 12. Now, Revelation chapter 12, um, verse 1 says, And there appeared a great wonder. Now, this word great wonder here, it's the only time it's ever used in the entire Bible. There was a great wonder in the heavens, a woman clothed with the sun. Now, look here. You can see the sun over her shoulder and over her left shoulder there. And with the moon under her feet, you see the moon there, not only just the moon, but there was Comet 67. Comet 67A was at the foot with the moon. And, um, and upon her head was 12 stars. Now, Virgo and Leo are both fixed stars. They're both constellations. They, they, the co entire constellation moves in the heavenlies, but those stars don't move like the wandering stars, like the planets, like the meteors, like the, uh, those stars move. But these stars do not move in the heavens. And so what God did, uh, there's a seven, there's a nine main stars that Leo has that's always at her head. But what did God did is he uh, brought alignment into, uh, into that, he brought in Venus, he brought in Mars, and he brought in Mercury. And each one of them are very significant planets. And um, so this was, this was something that happened in the heavenlies. We're gonna go back into it next year, uh, next, next program, because I wanna tell you what's happening now, this week, this month. And, and Father, I bless the people. Uh, may the Lord bless you. The, may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And in this year of 2018, may you have great peace. I say shalom, shalom. Amen.